Welcome back, this is episode number 5 of this tutorial series slash crash course on Rust Noetic. You can find the series playlist in the description. And let's get started. Now let's write our first node. This will be kind of a hello world node so that you can get familiar with how to write your own node, how to start it and how to use the command line tools to introspect the node. And in that terminal I'm first gonna go in my catkin workspace in the source folder of the catkin workspace and now I have my robot controller package. So in this I have a cmakelist.txt, package.xml and a source folder. I'm going to create a new folder named scripts for python files and actually python scripts. So now I have scripts. I'm gonna go inside scripts and let's create our first file for the first node. So here you just create a python file. So let's use touch to create a file. My first node.py. Okay, so just a normal python file. And let's make it executable, okay? So chmod plus x, my first node. And we have a python executable file. Great, now let's actually write the code for this file. And to write the code, I'm gonna come back to Catkin workspace, actually the source folder of the Catkin workspace and do code dot so that I can open Visual Studio Code in my Catkin workspace. And we are already here in the package and now we have this myfirstnode.py. So you can use any text editor, any IDE you want, okay? I'm just gonna follow this tutorial with Visual Studio Code. So the first line we're gonna write is actually this. So the interpreter user bin and and Python 3. So this is very important. We are using ROS Noetic, so we use Python 3. But if you were to use, uh, for example, ROS Melodic on Ubuntu 18 for some legacy project that you would need to work on, then you would need to use Python 2 and not Python 3. Okay, that's very important. But now everything we're gonna do with ROS Noetic is going to be with Python 3. So we have this line and then I'm gonna do import. Rospy. Okay, so we have added Rospy as a dependency when we created the package because we use the Rospy library in our Python code so that we can use the ROS functionalities. Now the thing is that we will not get auto-completion like that. We will need to configure Visual Studio Code. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to extensions here and uh, well, it seems that I already have C and C++ extension, but we don't really need that. I'm going to search for three extensions here that are going to be very useful for Ross. So the first one is Python. So let's search for Python and I'm going to install the one from Microsoft. Okay, so just click on install. Just wait a bit. Okay, now this is installed. I'm going to also search for CMake. And let's choose actually that one. CMake language support from TWXS. Let's install that so we can have better, as you can see, better syntax highlighting for CMake lists. And finally, you can search for ROS. There is a ROS here. ROS extension for Visual Studio Code from Microsoft also. And you're gonna install this extension as well. Okay, so now let's go back to our extensions. And you can see we have Python, ROS, CMake, and also C++, and two more that were installed when we installed the other extensions, all right? So what I'm gonna do is, well, I'm just gonna restart it just in case. And now we should have auto-completion for Python, and as you can see here, the ROSPy has been currently found Okay, so that's gonna be easier for development. Also, if you go to cmakelist.txt now, you can see this is much better. Okay, the syntax is highlighted. So, great, let's just remove that. And let's write if name. So let's write this structure for the main. So if name is equal to main, 
and we're gonna write our code here. And the first thing we need to do to write a node, to write a ROS node, is to first initialize the node with rospy dot init. And as you can see, I have the auto completion. So init node. And inside, we are gonna give the name of the node. So we can choose a name. Here we have a name for the file. We can choose a name for the node. Let's call it test node. Okay, so on purpose, I use a different name for the file and for the node just to show you that this is different. Okay, so basically this is the executable. This is the node and the node is gonna be inside an executable. So now we have initialized the test node. Great. So if I just run the Python script like that, it's gonna initialize the node and then quit and that's it. So let's do something. Let's print something, for example. Let's use the log functionality with raspy. So you can use, for example, log info like that. And let's say hello from test node. Okay, that's gonna print some log in the terminal. You can also use, for example, raspy.log1, okay, to print a warning message. So let's say this is a warning and we can use raspy.log error. So log error to say this is an error. Okay, you can use also raspy.log debug if you want. So you have uh, different log levels but here we're just gonna show log info log one and log air so this is basically a print okay this is a print but also this is gonna save the log so that you can also retrieve it for later and then well let's just use another function here raspy.sleep so this is the same as time.sleep okay you give a duration in seconds so let's wait for one second just put 1.0 for example and then let's put another print so raspy.loginfo and of program so here the python program will exit and the node will be shut down so i'm going to save the file with ctrl s and then let's go back to the terminal let's find the file again my robot controller script the file is here what you can simply do the simplest thing to do is just to run it with python 3 my first node.py and let's see what happens and here you will get an error unable to register with master node why is that because if you remember you need first to start a ros master before you can start any node and this also applies to your custom nodes so you can do ros core here that's gonna start a ROS master and then start your node. Also, this is very important. Make sure that, so if I do jdit bash rc, make sure that you have correctly sourced your global ROS installation, but also your current Catkin workspace. And so now if I do Python my first node, this is working, okay? As you can see, we have a log here, hello from test node. And then this is a warning, will be displayed in yellow here with one. And then this is an error, will be displayed in red with error. And as you can see, I can start it again. So we have this and then one second after end of program and then the program exits. So great, this is your first node. As it is executable, you can also just do this to run it. And that's the same. And what you can do, so let's go to the home directory, is use ROS run also. If you remember when we used some uh, nodes before, we used ROS run. And with ROS run, you need first to provide the name of the package and then the name of the executable. So what is the name of the package? The name of the package is my robot controller. So I'm gonna do my robot controller and just press tab. And then if I press tab again, well, that's gonna put my first node.py because for now, I just have one executable. And so I can start my node like this. Okay, great. So now we have a node that basically says something and then waits and then says something else and then exits. So that's not very interesting. So let's do something a bit more interesting. 
So I'm gonna remove all of that. Actually, let's just keep a log. I usually do that after I start the node or after I set up a node. Let's say test node has been started. Okay, so we have some confirmation on the terminal. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a very common structure used by many, many nodes in ROS. And this structure will allow us to just do something repeatedly every X uh, seconds, for example. So let's say we want to print something 10 times a second, so every 0.1 second, then you can easily do that with ROS. So I'm first gonna do rate is equal to ROSPy dot rate with uppercase, and I'm gonna provide 10. So as you can see here, I need to provide 10 hertz. So I create a rate. Then I'm going to do while not rospy dot is shut down. And while not rospy is shut down, we're gonna do something. So what is this? Rospy is shut down is gonna tell you if the node has received a shutdown request. So the node lives inside the executable. So if you try to kill the node, for example, with control C on the terminal or with some other signal that we're gonna see later, then this is gonna be true. And so what we're saying is that we're gonna create an infinite loop to continue doing some instructions as long as the node is still alive, basically as long as we haven't killed the node. And what we do here, let's do rospy.loginfo with, um, let's say, hello. And then I'm gonna do write.sleep. And then write.sleep is gonna, so it's gonna make the program sleep. It's gonna pause the program with this information, so 10 hertz, which means that it's gonna try to keep the loop running at 10 hertz. So basically every 0.1 second in that case. Okay, so that's a great mechanism to use in ROS, write.slip, so that you can have a loop that is running at a given frequency, here 10 Hz. And if you want to change the frequency, you just modify the frequency here. And so to recap, this program will first uh, arrive here. It's gonna initialize the node, name test node. So that's the first, the very first line you need to do. If you don't do this, you can't use ROS functionalities. After that, we just print something with log info, and then we create a write object here, and we have a very common structure, which is an infinite loop that's gonna run as long as the node hasn't been shut down. In this, we do any action we want. So here, the action is just to print something. Let's keep things simple for now. And then we use write.slip so that we can control the speed of the loop. And when we kill the node, well, we're just gonna arrive here. This is gonna be true. And so we're gonna exit the while and because we don't have anything else after the while, the program is gonna exit and then everything is gonna be shut down. So let's save this and let's go back to the terminal. So actually minimize this and let's run the node again. So here you can see I don't need to compile anything, okay? This is a Python file, so we can just launch the file again. And now you can see, hello, if I press Ctrl C, okay, we exit from the node. So what happened first, we have test node has been started, and then hello, 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 every, you can see, every 0.1 second. So that's working. And so keep in mind this structure here. That's something that you're gonna use a lot. For example, if you have a sensor and you write a node for a sensor, a hardware sensor, and you want to publish the data at, let's say, 50 Hz, then you just create a structure like this and you publish the data at 50 Hz inside the infinite while loop. Okay, and I'm just gonna show you something else. So you have seen that you can use ROS run to start the node, and now what you can do, let's uh, write here, you can do ROS node list. So ROS node is a new command line for you with list. And you can see the list of all nodes running in the graph. So you have 
What is that? Ross out. Okay. Ross out is a node that's going to be studied here, you can see, from the Ross master. So that's a node that's going to basically handle logging functionalities. And so every time you do Ross node list, as long as you have a Ross master running, you will see Ross out. And then we have test node. And so as you can see here, so I do control C, the executable is named my first node. But in the graph, the node is not the same as the executable. The node is test node because that's what we have provided here in the code. Okay, and as you can see now, if I do ROS node list, I don't have test node because it's not running. If I do this, ROS node list, it is here. Now, if I want to kill the node, you can see I can use Control C and I can also do ROS node kill and then just provide the name of the node with auto completion. I press enter and you can see shutdown request here and the node has been killed. Okay, and finally, let's start it again and let's do RQT graph to see that we have, well, we have a node, test node. This node is not doing anything special it's not publishing to another node, it's not communicating, so we just have one node in the graph. If I remove the debug here, okay, the debug, you can see we have the ROS out node here, okay, but we're gonna keep debug so that we only focus on our application. All right, and Control C to kill the node again. Actually, just one more thing, so let's say you have a node running here and you're trying to start the same node, so ROS run, my robot controller, my first node. What's going to happen is that this node is going to start here, but it's going to be killed in that terminal. The reason is that a new node registered with the same name. So if I start the node again here, this node has been killed here. So the problem is that in ROS, you can't have two nodes that have the same name that are running at the same time. Okay, so this is very important to keep in mind. And well, now that's pretty much it. You have now created your first node and used a few of the most important ROS functionalities such as logging, sleep, rates, etc. You can start your own node and you can introspect your ROS graph. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full course named ROS for Beginners. This course contains six hours of content and will teach you everything you need to create complete ROS applications. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.